You know, it's good to be here to preach in the first service, the first sermon of RCA. What a momentous occasion. Amen? Amen. 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 Wow. You know, so much is done just to get here today. Many sleepless nights, many cleaning over and over again, buying of new things, you know, uh, receiving goods, preparing the sermon. A lot of prayer and fasting has gone into this. In fact, our intercessor team has been praying and fasting for the last one month or so, every day, to work towards today. A lot has been done. But God is good. He has led us thus far. He will lead us all the way. Can somebody say amen? amen. All the way. It's a new season for a new day. That's the title of my sermon. And God is doing a new thing in our midst. And Pastor Dom has already uh, you know, alluded to that verse earlier. And that's where I'm preaching from today as well. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 21. You can read along uh, in the PowerPoint sites. Verse 18, but forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me, the jackals and owls too, for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland so my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself and they will someday honor me before the whole world. Bless the reading of the word of God. Amen. Everybody say, forget the past. Say, God's about to do something new. Amen. Amen. You know, we have entered into a new season in RCA. God is doing a new thing in our midst. We have a new vision. We will reach new people. We will start new ministries. We will develop new leaders. We will have new liaisons and associations. God will open new doors for us so that we can do great works for the kingdom of God. Some, somebody shout amen. amen. That's what RCA is about. How many of you want God to do a new thing in your life? About half of you. Everyone wants that, right? God, you want God to do a new thing in your life? Something good, something marvelous in your life? Amen. What does it take to receive the new thing, the new blessing of God? Well, today I want to share with you three points here of the keys of receiving the new blessing of the Lord. The first is this. Are you ready? Yes. Paper, pen, right? Pastor Dawi always says paper, pen. Yeah, just take notes. Number one, we must shake off the past to embrace the new. Verse 18, but forget all this. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do. You see, sometimes the good can hold us back from doing a new thing. In the earlier verses before verse 18, the Bible says, you know, forget all the wonderful things I've done in the past. It's time to move on. That's what God said. In the past, He said, I've opened up the Red Sea uh, for you to cross over. I've destroyed the Egyptian army by drowning them in the Red Sea. I've done great and mighty works in the past. But don't look back to those things I've done and expect me to do the same thing for you in the future. That's what God is saying. Because I'm going to do even greater things among you. Can somebody say amen? amen? In other words, even if you had a good experience in the past, the good can hold you back from the better thing that God wants to do in your life. Good is the enemy of what's better. There's a famous book by Jim Collins uh, by the name of Good too great. How many of you have read that book or, or know about it? Yeah, I think it's quite famous. And he said this, he said, good is the enemy of great. He explained that when we have good schools, good institutions, good businesses, we are prone to accept the level of quality as sufficient or as enough. He observed that few people attain great lives because it is so easy to settle for a good life. That's why the book is about. And we want to thank God for the past. It's not that we want to, you know, just forget it in that sense, but we want to thank God for how He has led us thus far. But we must not let the good old days hold us back from the better thing that He has for us in the future. See, the enemy of what's best for the future is actually contentment and complacency. 
It's dwelling in the comfort zone, not wanting to move out. We are kind of content and, and, and complacent with the good we already enjoy right now. And so we do not forge forward towards what is better that God has installed for us. And God really calls us from glory to glory. If we are not growing, we're actually stagnating. And if we are stagnating, we are actually declining. If we're actually declining. And God is always calling us to do new things. He calls us to new creativities, new works like the church plan that we're doing, so that the kingdom of God can advance and make new impact in the world. Can somebody say amen? amen. We must move on and look forward to what is better ahead. And the opposite is true too. You see, the bad can also hold us back from doing new things. Not just the good things, but the bad things as well. See, bad things that happened in the past puts fear in us and stops us from entering into a better future. Fear has a way of stopping us from doing something new. We prefer what is safe and what is same old, same old. It's boring, but it's safe. You know what I'm talking about? Don't rock my boat, you say, because it's comfortable the way it is. And sometimes, you know, this fear of getting hurt again or fear of the unknown stops us from advancing forward. Yet God tells us to surrender that fear to Him. Surrender the bad experiences to Him. To trust Him that He will take care of things for us so that we can move on from glory to glory. Now, to embrace the new, we must have a change of mindset. Change of mindset. In Luke chapter 5, verse 37 to 39, Jesus was talking to the crowd and particularly the Pharisees. It says this, And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the new wine would burst the wineskins, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. Verse 38, New wine must be stored in new wineskin, but no one who drinks the old wine seems to want the new wine. You know, they say, Oh, the old is just fine. And that's the mentality of many even today. You see, Jesus was saying that if you pour the new wine that is still maturating and producing carbon dioxide, you see what happens? That how they make wine is this. They get grapes, they crush it, they put yeast in it so that it can ferment uh, the grape juice and turn it into wine. And in that fermentation, carbon dioxide is produced. And so if you put this in an old wineskin that is old and not stretchable, it will burst the wineskin because it is still bubbling inside. So you have to put new wine that's still maturating into new wine skin that is stretchable. All right, so that it can expand with the new wine and contain the new wine and not break the wine skin. So God was, Jesus was telling us about this, that we need to be new wine skins, human vessels that are flexible, stretchable to con contain the new things that God has for you and I. And in this context, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. You see, they are the old wineskins. Their whole life, they've been waiting for the Messiah to come. And Jesus Christ, the Messiah, was standing right in front of them and they could not recognize him because they were the old wineskin. They expected Jesus to come as a king, you know, as a great Messiah. But he didn't come that way. He came as a humble servant. And so they could not accept that and missed the Savior completely. So friends, if you want God to do a new thing in your life today, you have to get rid of the old wineskin, the old mindset, the old thinking, and embrace that new wineskin, that stretchable, that changeable mindset. Say, I'm willing to change. I'm willing to grow. I'm willing to do something new. And only then and that, that God can come in to do that new work in your life. Can somebody say amen? amen. In application, I want to speak to two groups of people. Number one, you are not a believer today. You're not a Christian. You're not yet a Christian. But maybe your family member, your friend, you know, they've invited you to come today. And I know the food is good later, but spiritual food is also very good. This is the message for you. The new thing that God wants to do for you is to give you a new life. New life in Christ. Titus chapter 3 verse 5 says, He saved us not because of the righteous things that we have done, but because of His mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. 
you know, you, you're, you're here and you, and you say, you know, I want something new to happen to my life, something fresh, something exciting, something good, to live life with a new purpose. And you're tired of the same old, same old in the past. A new life is what the Bible promises to all who would believe in Him. And today is the opportunity for that to happen to you. The presence of God is already in this place. Just open your heart. Just allow the Word of God that's being preached for to come and you know, bear fruit in your life. Just open your heart to Jesus because Jesus Christ wants to give you that new life today. And what is this new life? It's like, you know, Jesus giving you... Uh, a blank check. How many of you like to receive blank check? I think all of us, right? You can write any amount you want. It's already signed by Jesus. And it will, you, you encash it, it will be paid. All right, it will be paid to you. And what is this? This blank check. This blank check is the check that you can fill in and pay off all the debt of sin that you have ever committed in your life. You just sign that off. You say, oh, it's a hundred million or whatever it is. And Jesus will pay it in full with his blood. And that is what Jesus offers to everybody who would come to him. He says that your sins will be completely forgiven. You don't have to live in the past of guilt and shame anymore, but you can be a new person today. The new person today with a new future. And that's God's promise to you if you have not yet believed in Jesus. Just three days ago, a, a, a former colleague suddenly passed away. It was such a shock to all of us on Thursday morning. And uh, what happened was he sent his wife to, I think, exercise it was, and he went to work. And at about 11 o'clock, I understand that he collapsed in the office. They tried to resuscitate him, but couldn't. And so he has passed on. And, you know, though we are very, very sad for the passing of this dear friend whom I worked with uh, for three years uh, in Trinity, but yet in our hearts we are comforted because we all know where he is. You know, he's gone to heaven because he has written that blank check, wrote all you know, the sins and, and the, the payment for it on that check and cashed it. And you know, his sins have been paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, he is in heaven today for eternity. There is no loss in that sense. And one day, all who are in Christ will be able to meet up with him again. We'll give each other high fives again. We're talking about that. You know, one day when it's our time, to go. In fact, yesterday I was at the wake and one lady, uh, she came and talked to me and she said, you know, nothing is guaranteed in this world. Only death is guaranteed. I said, yeah, <laughs> which is true, which is all of us will go that way one day. But the question is, where will you go? Where will you go? I know my dear brother who had passed on three days ago suddenly is with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah so there's no worries. How about you? Do you know where you're going? After this life, Jesus promises eternal life, the new life in Him. And not just eternity, because we all do not know when, you know, it's our day, our last day here, but also a fulfilling life on this earth. This is what Jesus Christ promised to us. And today could be your opportunity to know this Saviour that could transform your life, give you new life, just like many of us have experienced that. And for myself, the last 36 years, I've experienced the new life in Christ and it's completely changed me. 180 degrees from a bad girl to a good girl. Ah. And many, many other testimonies here uh, of how God has transformed their lives. Second group of you, you are Christians, but you are searching for a purpose. New purpose in God through joining RCA. Okay, it's a recruitment drive. Some of you have been going from church to church, okay, never really making any commitment to stay anywhere, to serve anywhere. It's time to settle down. Would you consider Risen Christian Assembly? If you, if you want to, we warmly welcome you. Or maybe some of you, you've completely stopped going to church uh, because of a, maybe a bad experience in the past. You need to allow God to heal that old wound and embrace a new start again. In RCA, we will give you the opportunity to grow by serving, like all these guys are serving, all of them wearing at least three hats, huh? choir, you know, whatever else they're doing, at least three hats. And we will give you opportunity to serve God, to be empowered, and to be discipled here. We are a caring community because that is our value. We will love and we will nurture you to grow in Christ and you will find family here. So it's time to settle down in a church. Why not? In Risen Christian Assembly. Amen? 
Number two, to receive the new thing of God, uh, you know, you, you not only have to forget the past, but we must be able to envision the new thing, to see the new thing. Okay, it says here in uh, verse 19, uh, For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? So wow, see and see, right? In the NIV version, which is a more literal translation, it reads, See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? You see, to receive the new thing that God has for us, we must be able to see it first. We must be able to envision it first. We must have the vision for the new thing that God has for us. The first word see in the Hebrew is behold. Nowadays, we seldom use this word. Behold. Okay, but it means behold. It's a strong word with an exclamation mark at the end of it. It's like God shaking us up and telling us, Behold, wake up! Don't you see that I'm doing a new thing? The second word perceive is the word yada in Hebrew. It's a much stronger word than perceive in English. It means to clearly understand, to comprehend. It is the same word used to describe how intimately a husband knows a wife in a physical manner, like Adam knew Eve, Adam yada Eve. So God is saying, hey, wake up. Don't you see I'm doing something new? It's coming up. Do you not see it clearly? Do you not understand it? You see, new things that God will do are not conceived out of the human mind. But it begins with the vision that God gives to you. You need a clear vision from the Lord for the new thing that He will pour into your life. You know, perhaps some of you, I don't know, do you have a vision to have a happy family? How many of you have a vision for that happy family? Yeah, I think many, many people want that. Maybe, you know, you're single and you want a, a, a good wife, maybe a good husband, or maybe you're married, you, you want to have lovely children, right? That's a great vision for a family. You know, single, lead, single ladies, I'm talking to single ladies now, uh, can you see a handsome husband standing next to you? Can you see that? All right, somebody is waving at me. Yeah, you have to see it. You must be able to see, oh, the tall, dark, and handsome man standing next to me. And so I will pray and I'll claim it to come to pass. Friends, if you can see it, it will come to pass. Why? Because you'll pray about it and God will answer specifically. But I hope it's not just tall, dark, and handsome. Lah. I pray that it's a godly man as well. Amen. And for the men as well, you're looking for a, a, a woman. Can you imagine a beautiful woman standing next to you? If you can't see it, it won't happen. You got to see it. You got to claim it. You say, yeah, I want a beautiful wife. I want a godly woman. You know, I want somebody, somebody who can walk this life uh, with me. You know, if you can see that, it can come to pass. Amen? Amen? You got to see the vision. You got to see the vision. And we are able to see the vision. It shall come to pass. God spoke to me on several occasions in the last two years about the vision of this new church plan. Uh, for many times, I, I was just doing prophetically, uh, prophetic journaling, asking the Lord, what's the vision of this church? I would journal it, put it aside, three months later, journal again, put it aside, three months later, journal again, or for a period of time, I'll do that, and I'll not refer back to it. And then I'll print it all out, and I'll begin to circle and highlight all the common points. And that's how the vision of this church was born, because it's the same thing over and over again. So I know that God is speaking. And I see it. I see it clearly. What's the vision of this church? I pray about it very, very often. And we work and plan towards it. And that's how the vision of this church shall come to pass because it's birthed by the Spirit of God. Just to share with you very quickly, all right, uh, about what this vision is. It's GEMS, G-E-M-S, number one, G for God atmosphere, where the presence of God will fill every meeting of the church, where signs, wonders, and miracles will take place because we learn how to host the presence of God. And it has already happened in our weekly prayer meeting leading up to this service today. We have experienced answered prayer, physical healings, uh, deliverance, and spiritual healing of every kind. And I don't have time to elaborate. You can go to our board at the back, third floor, second floor. The testimonies are posted there. E, E for evangelistic heart. Uh, like what Pastor uh, Dowdy talked about. It, you know, we will perpetuate evangelism. Where Risenites have a heart for the lost and an urgency to reach them for Christ. And we have already experienced four salvations before the first service. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God the glory. Two from friends and two at our street evangelism last Thursday. And we also have a vision to reach the Mandarin speaking. And that's why right now, every word that I'm saying is being interpreted into Mandarin 
at the, at the in interpreter's booth, right? There are two people who have signed up to become interpreters so that you can bring your Mandarin-speaking friends here and they'll be able to hear the Word of God, preach to them, and come to Christ. Amen. We're doing that because we have the vision for the lost. We have the vision to save even the Mandarin-speaking. Right from the first service, we have started our interpretation program. One, to interpret the song. And the prayer class sitting there laughing at me. The second one, souping to interpret the very message I am preaching right now. Mission, M for mission, mission-minded. God says to me, my heartbeat is for the nations. And that's why I'm glad Pastor Dom says, hey, let's do something together for missions. You see, you can't do church without missions, without fulfilling the very heartbeat of God. And so we will tie up with foreign organizations and churches to do outreaches and humanitarian work. Locally, we've already done one project. Before the church started, we've already done one through ACS, our uh, Arise Community Services, all right, our community service. We have helped one uh, elderly lady clean up her place, declutter her home. And after this service, please go to the second floor. We're having a yard sale because all the stuff that she has, that we brought out from her house, we are going to uh, sell it. You can make donation and we will uh, contribute that to ACS. Amen? Amen. We've already done one project. More to come. As for strong leaders, we'll embark to mentor and raise strong leaders for Christ so that we can be a strong church full of disciples. That's our vision, G-E-M-S. When we can see the vision clearly, the new thing of God will take place. In application, what is the vision God has given to you for your future? Can you see it clearly? Can you see that desired future that God has given to you? If not, you say, oh, it's a blank. It's a blur. Well, today is the day for you to ask God for the new vision for your life, for your family, for your business, for your ministry, for different things in your life, for that future that He has for you. Or some of you, you've had a vision before, but it died. Nothing happened for years and years and years. Today is the day to revive that vision that God has given to you years ago. You can live it out so that God can do that new thing in your life. Amen? Today is a new day. Today is a day that the new vision can be birthed in your life life. Amen. 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 The third thing to receive the new thing that God has for us is this. We must step out in faith. Step out in faith. Verse 19, for I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? You know, when I read this many times through, I said, hey, it sounds a bit of a contradictory statement. So God says, I'm about to do something new. See, I've already begun. So has God already started to do it or has he not yet started to do it is the question what does it mean then in the niv version it gives a clearer picture it says see i'm doing a new thing now it springs up do you not perceive it the word spring up what does this mean it is an image of a germinating herb an image of the silent but certain gradual growth of god's new work what are herbs Parsley, sage, rosemary, and... Okay, you all know the song. All right, you know, you, okay, how many of you know that uh, it's going to take a while for this herb to grow and germinate from the seed? I mean, in primary school, uh, the teacher used to do this to us. I, I'm not sure if they still do it nowadays. Got to ask Adeline behind, you know, kids in primary school. Uh, get a jar, put cotton wool, put a green bean. Or they, do they still do it nowadays? Okay, and then, and then uh, water the cotton wool and then watch it grow. When I was a kid, I would stare at it. Yeah, how come I haven't grown? Ah? How come it's still one green bean? How many of you have done that before? You stood in front of a plant, you put, you know, you put a seed, you put it in a uh, flower pot, soil, fertilizer, put water, and you stare at it for 20 minutes. Do you see it growing? How many of you see it growing? None, right? None. But the question is, is it growing? Yes, it's just that you can't see it with your naked eye. It's microscopic. It's so slow. So slow. And the word spring up, I always we think about, oh, now it springs up. You think about a jack in a box, isn't it? Spring. Oh, like, ding, come out from the box. No, it's not. It's not that kind of spring. It's a very slow one, like a herb plant growing from the ground. And so God is already moving. What this verse says is this. You know, He's already started. Do you not see it? Yes, we can't see it with the naked eye, but it's already there and we must receive it by faith. Everybody say by faith. We have to step out in faith, knowing that God is already at work, even though we don't see it with our naked eye, but we step out in faith and trust that God is causing it to grow. 
So whatever it is in the kingdom of God, it has to be done by faith. And some of, the, some of you, you are very ah, impatient. Lord, I, I have stepped out already. How come nothing is happening yet? It's God's timing, not your timing. And God already promised in His Word, it springs up, do you not see it? It's just at a microscopic rate that you can't see. But trust in God's timing because He shall always bring that promise to pass for you. Amen? Amen. Some of you have not stepped out yet. It's time to step out today. Some of you, God really told you, step out, step out, but you never step out. You just stay in your seats. Yeah, I'll wait for something to happen first before I step out. But God is saying, you cannot wait for something to happen. Just obey and step out and I will do the rest. Some of you, you've already stepped out. How come nothing happening? Because it's not your timing yet. Just be faithful. Have persevering faith and it shall happen. There was a story of um, Hudson Taylor. You know him? Famous missionary sent from the UK uh, England to China to preach the gospel. Very, very famous uh, missionary. So he was on his voyage, first voyage, from the UK to China. And in those days, no moto in the boat, by sail type, dependent on the wind. So on his way from the UK, uh, England to China, they came very, very close to cannibal islands. And there was no wind. And the current was carrying them closer and closer to the cannibal islands. And there was nothing they could do about it. And so the cannibals were waiting at the shore with a fork and spoon, very eagerly waiting to eat the captain, the crew, and Hudson Taylor. And so what happened was the captain panicked, came to the room, and knocked on Hudson Taylor's door. I heard you're a preacher. He said, yes. Can you pray? Can you pray that God uh, will... Will, will take us, you know, save us, save us somehow from the cannibals, from being eaten. And then Hudson Taylor said, you know, I won't do it until you put up the sail. Then I'll pray. And then the captain laughed nervously. He said, uh, there is no wind for the last few days. No wind at all. There's no point putting up the sail because there's not, not going to be any wind. But Hudson Taylor says, if you do not put up the sail, I'm not going to pray. So out of desperation, he agreed. So he put up the sail. So he, at the moment, he was praying in the room. Then there was a knock on the door. The captain knocked at the door. He said, Mr. Taylor. He said, yes, are you still praying? He said, yes, I'm still praying. He said, you can stop now. There's too much wind that we can't handle. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The moral of the story is this. You must put up the sail for God to bring the wind. You must step out in faith for God to work that wonder in your life. If you're always in your seat doing nothing, nothing's going to happen. Everything is transacted by faith in the kingdom of God. If the Lord's spoken to you about something, do it quickly. Don't wait next year, two years, five years later, when my children are grown up, when I'm retired. Do it now. Do it now. Step out in faith and then the power of God will come to you. The miracles of God will take place in your life. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 These are the three things you need to do. Three things you need to do. But you know what? When you do all these things, to forget the past, whether it's good or bad, all right, or you know, the old wrong mindset, to see the vision of what's new, to step out in faith, God gives you a promise. What's the promise? Verse 19 and 20. In the midst of the wilderness and the wasteland in your life, both words mean desert. Wilderness and wasteland both mean desert. God will do a new thing. The new thing is not given in the state of perfection in your life. It's given in the state of need. In your desert places is where God will bring that new work in your life. God is not going to do the new thing only when you have it all together. Some of you say, I got to get it all together before I come to Christ. No, you cannot. It is not possible. But in Christ, you say, okay, I'm going to step out. In my pain, in my wilderness, in my desert places, God do that mighty work in my life and He will do it. God will refresh you in the desert places. Amen. Perhaps you're going through a difficult marriage right now, a difficult business, it's not picking up, a strained relationship with somebody dear. Maybe you're facing a lawsuit. Maybe you have a serious sickness or somebody at home is ill. Or perhaps you're even fighting depression or having financial problems and so on and so forth. But I've got good news for you. God will make a way for you in your desert places. He will do something new in your life 
today. In fact, the blessing that God will pour into your life is not just for you, but it will overflow to the lives of others around you. Here it says even the wild animals, the owls, the jackals, will benefit from the water that God will send to the people of God, which means to say those around you will benefit from the blessings that God will pour into your life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? God's blessing will not just be for you, but for those around you. Now, why does God want to do this, want to bless us with the new thing uh, in your life and my life? Verse 21 explains it. He said, I've, I made Israel for myself and they will someday honor me before the whole world. So why God is doing this is this, that God will want all the glory to belong to him so that the whole world will know the greatness of our God. Are you ready to receive the blessing of the Lord today? Amen. Shall we all stand right now? Let's all stand. We'll have the musicians come back.